Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skaldi and today we're going to create a player controller with Rigidbody 2D using Godot 2.2 or above. Now if you're using the stable build which is currently 2.1 you will not be able to follow this video as you'll be using functions that are exclusive to the newer version that makes life so much easier when working with input. Now I'll provide a link in the description below where you can download a more recent build so, I have provided a project for us, which we are going to use in order to create our player controller. Now, in our project here, we have a player folder containing a sprite image. We have a tile sets folder, which contains a grassland folder, which contains an export folder containing the tile set, which we are going to load inside a tile map. So, let's just jump right into this here. Let's select our player controller with Rigibody 2D. And let's start by creating our main scene. Let's hit the plus sign, select a control node, renaming this to main. Let's create a tile map under main. Not that we have any options. <laughs> let's rename this to world and load our tile set inside our export folder right here. Now the size is not correct because we need to resize our cell to be 32 by 32. Perfect. Let's press Ctrl S to save. Let's make sure it's name main and hit save. Okay, so let's draw our world. Let's create some flat landscape here and let's get some slopes. There we go. And lastly, by the way, the way I am dragging a square using tile map is by holding Ctrl and Shift and then press down the left mouse button and just drag. There we go. Oops, pressing Ctrl S to save again, and now we're going to start by creating our player. So let's create a new scene, because we are going to instance our player later on. So in our new scene, we're going to create a rigid body 2D. And rename this Player. Let's press Ctrl S to save it, and put it inside the player folder, named Player TSCN. There we go. Okay, so we need a body for our player, we can't currently see it. So let's hit the plus sign again, and let's find a sprite. Gonna name this to sprite, with lower capital letters, and I'm going to load our sprite from the player folder. Which is right here. Okay, so we're almost there, but we don't. it doesn't look right, it's blurry. And we don't want that, so we're gonna hit texture, and we're gonna edit it. And then under flags, we're gonna uncheck filter. Perfect. And now, we need to create a collision shape in order for the player to have something solid. Otherwise, it's just gonna fall through the world and everything else. So let's find a collision shape 2D. Let's rename this to collision. And let's load a shape. I'm going to pick a capsule shape. But it's really up to you. It doesn't really matter what shape you pick. It's what fits your character the most. So let me make sure to drag the shape itself and not the node 2D transform. Because if you were to change this, you would change the scale. And changing scale can have unintended consequences. So make sure you leave the scale at 1 1 and instead either change the sprite size or in this case the shape size. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna make sure our both our feet are on the ground. And this is fine. Now I'm gonna change the position to be exactly zero in the x-axis so it is completely centered. Good, good. Okay, what else do we need? Well, I'm gonna need a camera to follow our player. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign again, I'm gonna load a camera 2D. I'm gonna select it, rename this to camera, and set it as current camera as well as to zoom in to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. As you can see here, these are the borders that you will see when you play the scene of your character. Okay, so we are more or less ready. Let's try to instance our character here. And when I say ready, I mean ready for testing in our main world here, to see if everything is alright so far. Not that it's finished, it's in fact far from finished. <laughs> Let's hit the play button, make sure to select our main scene, which you created here, which is main TSEN. Double click and hit play again. And now you can see you're slowly falling down onto the ground. Now, if I were to move our character now, he would just tumble around. So we must remember to make sure that we select Rigidbot 2D and turn the mode to character. Once that is done, your character will not rotate if it's affected by physics from outside. Let's right-click the player and create our player script. This is the script for our player itself. 
However, we are going to create another script that the player will inherit, inherit from. And that script will be rescharacter.gd. Now the reason I'm doing this is so I can create other characters such as enemies or NPCs. Well, I guess enemies would be NPCs, but friendly NPCs. <laughs> now we want those NPCs to be able to move as well as the player, of course. So I'm going to remove funk and we're going to use a custom function which I'm going to name... Mm, apply force. Yeah, apply force. And that will take in a state. Let's just pass it here and let's jump into our new character GD script, which we are going to create now. So click file, select new, make sure you put it in under rest here, the root. Let's name this character.gd and hit create. Okay, so our character, or rather our player is extending character GD, but the player needs to be a rigid body. So I'm going to extend a rigid body 2D from the character code. So I'm going to remove ready because we will not be using it. Instead, we're going to use a function called integrate forces. And that gives us a state containing a lot of physics data. Now, what integrate forces is, integrate, let me show you here. Which about to the integrate forces here. Let me read what it says here. Called during physics processing, allowing you to read and safely modify the simulation state for the object. And that gives us a physics 2D direct body state, which has a lot of physics that we can interact with. I do recommend you take a look at this, because a lot of you can tweak here. But we're not going to use a lot of this, we're just going to use set line of velocity and as well as get step, which gives us the delta time equ equivalent. Inside integrate forces, we are going to need a vector. So we're going to create a variable we call, and name it final force. And that's going to be of a type vector too. Now you don't need to write this, but it helps so you can see early on that this expects a vector too. So this will be the final force that's going to be applied. Now what we will need is a directional force, which will be set by the player from within apply force. So let's start by already getting input. So if input is action pressed, and if you're pressing UI left, which is a key bind that is set if you go under scene, project settings, and inside input map, you have a list of all actions as well as which button you have to press to activate those actions. Now we are going to use UI left, right, up, down, and UI select, which is a space bar, which, which we are going to use to jump with. Okay, let's get back to our input here. So if we are pressing the left arrow, we are going to move left. So we're going to set a directional force to be plus equal to a direction left. Now this direction is a dictionary that we are going to create inside our character here. So we can use this from other scripts such as an enemy script or a talking NPC script that moves. <laughs> so now we have a left direction and a right direction and we're using plus equal so this adds up. So if I were to hold down the left button and right button at the same time as this is playing, it means we wouldn't move left or right because this would cancel each other out and that is what we want. Because if we were to do a common mistake, very common, used to else, or rather L if, it means if I were to hold down left and right button at the same time, left will always take priority. So even if I were to hold down the right button first and then hold down the left button at the same time, we would go left. But what we want is that we don't move when both buttons are pressed. So we're gonna add them like this. Okay, so that's it for this script, at least for now. So. Let's jump into our character script here, and we're gonna make directional force and direction. So let's create a movement property, actually movement variables, I guess. Let's create a directional force is equal to a vector two. And let's create a dictionary constant called direction. And let's create a mm, none, no, zero. Because we have a zero direction, which is nowhere. <laughs> Basically, you are not moving any direction. We have a left, which is the negative x direction. Now right will be positive x direction, up will be negative y direction, and down will be positive y direction. So let's fix this right here. What are we going to use this variable for, you ask? Well, this is what we are going to assign. This is the force we're going to manipulate. So first, I'm going to make sure we are not moving when you are not 
changing the direction. It's a long comment, but a descriptive one. So let's use directional force is equal to direction zero by default. Because otherwise, this will not change. So if you press left once, it will remain to be left. So it will think you will always move left. So you have to set it to zero before we do that. And here comes the fun part. This is where we are going to apply force. So we're going to create a method called, or rather a function called apply force. And that is going to take in a state. And this is the function that's going to be all written on the player. So we also need this function inside our character. So we're going to create a func apply force state. And this is simply going to pass because this func is overwritten by the character, which is in this case our player. Let's take a look here. We're getting directional force to zero by default. And then we apply the force in the character. And this is the part that changes this. So after apply force, we are going to get our velocity or our final force. So we're gonna set we're gonna set final force to be equal to our current for um, current liner velocity. So state get liner velocity, and we're gonna append a speed on this. So we will have a directional force that will be minus. It will be a normalized direction. It will be like left or right or top left, top so on. If you're jumping, that is. So that directional force is times acceleration. And that acceleration constant is actually... Let's not make it a constant. Let's make it a changeable. So let's make it uh, a simple variable here. So we have acceleration here. Character properties. Let's get a var acceleration. Let's set it default to 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. That may seem a lot, but... If you want to feel that you are in control of your character, you will need a high acceleration. Now, if it's 10,000 or 1,000, I'm not sure. I don't remember when the last time I played with this. So, let's just keep acceleration to 10,000. Now, this property can be overwritten inside the player. So, if you were to create a func ready, you can set acceleration to your own acceleration, which changes what this does down here. But this is just default, so let's write default character properties. Now, not only do we need acceleration, we need a top speed. So top speed can be equal to 200. And lastly, we need a jump speed, which we're going to set after we are finished with our horizontal movement. So let's create a jump speed. Actually, top jump speed. So we know this is the higher level. Actually, top move speed. Yeah, there we go. That's good. It looks nice too. It's equal with... <laughs> okay, now let's use acceleration there. We have a move speed. Top smooth speed, which we'll use to limit the speed. Now, this is going to be a bit funky way of doing it, but it is one out of probably many ways of doing this. This is just the way I prefer to do it myself. So let's prevent ourselves from exceeding max top speeds. So if top move speed is greater than our current final force x, we are going to set final force x to be equal to our top move speed. Wait a moment here. Let me change these. There we go, now it's right. If our current horizontal velocity is greater than our top speed, then we set our velocity x to be top speed. Now, we're gonna do the opposite now. So we're gonna set final force x if it's less than negative top move speed. So if you move towards the left and it exceeds the top speed, we are going to set the x speed with negative top move speed. Now, this will control it in the x direction, but what about the y direction? We don't want it to jump very ex excessively high in the air, so we're gonna do that for the y as well. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it below here, I'm gonna change the x to y, and I'm gonna change top move speed to top jump speed. I'm gonna copy this, paste, paste, and paste. So let's take a last look here. We are now updating our final force by getting the current velocity and setting our directional force. So make sure let's make sure that we add this final force to our character. So we, in order to do that, we add force using a state set liner velocity and then you set it to be final force. And that's how you do it. Let's take a quick look here, make sure we are not missing anything. Perfect. I believe this should be accurate. Now you can always overwrite this as well. Speed. In fact, I recommend you always update them within your player, so it fits your needs. 
Let's hit the play button and see if everything is as expected here. Oh boy, that's very slow. Okay, movement is very nice. However, I'm kind of sliding too much. And that is because the gravity is very low. As you can see. So let us tweak our rigid body 2D directly by going into our editor. Let's set the gravity scale to be 10 times as much. Control S to save and let's hit play again. That looks better. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, as you notice, we are bouncing. That's because this is rigid body 2D and it's very physics based. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with movement. Are you? Let's go back to our player character and let's create the ability to jump. So how will we do that? Well, I'm going to create a controller for jumping. So let us first create the input for it. So if input is action pressed, so if I'm holding down the UI select, which is the spacebar, if I'm holding down spacebar, I want to append an up direction force here. So directional force plus equal direction up. So, if I only do this, I'm just gonna fly. Woo! And I keep, I'll keep moving upwards until I release it. So, it kind of works now. I mean, you can kind of bounce around. It's not too bad either, but you don't want to be able to fly, because I can fly now if I just press the jump button a little bit. So, how do we limit that? Now, the reason I'm using 2.2, and the reason I'm showing you what I can do using a 2.2 or a more recent build, maybe, maybe you're using 3.0 right now, who knows? is because if you're not pressing is action released you can use elif let's copy this paste it in here is action underscore just underscore released now this will only run once so if input action just released and it is a space bar we are going to disable jump before we do anything here we are going to create a timer or we're not going to create a timer but we're going to get delta and we're going to check whether or not the time has exceeded a certain threshold. So behind is action pressed, you select. We're gonna create a and jump time is less than top max top <laughs> jump time here. I couldn't decide. So if our jump time is less than top jump time and you can jump. Now this is a little different than grounded because grounded will be used you can have a variable called rounded. By default, it's false. This variable we will use to check whether or not we are on the ground, like it says. But it's not going to be used to check whether or not we can jump, because the condition for us to jump is a bit different than just being on the ground. Now, because we are using is action pressed, this is going to run, it's going to keep looping, looping, looping while holding it down. So in order to prevent it from looping forever, allowing us to fly, we're going to create this condition to make sure we can't hold it for longer than top jump time. However, if we don't add a can jump boolean here, we can just tap jump slightly in order to jump more than once, and we don't want that. So whenever we are releasing our jump button, we're gonna disable jump forcefully, so can jump will be set to false. Now let me create the variable top here. So var can jump is by default false unless I'm on the ground. Let me remove that. So how do I know when I'm on the ground? in order to enable this again, because we can only jump when you're on the ground. So if I am grounded, can jump is set to true and jump time, which is used to check whether or not it exceeds our jump time, will be also set to zero. Because everything is everything is all good when you're on the ground. It means you can jump anytime, regardless of not if you're jumped or not. So under here, I'm gonna copy jump time. I'm gonna enter it there, I'm gonna click plus equal a delta time. Or rather State dot get step. This gives you the delta time. Now, what we need to do, we need to create jump time and top jump time. So I'm gonna do that here as well. Var jump time is equal to zero, and I have a const top jump time. Let's set it to hmm, 0.1 second. Let me create some comments here. When we start, when our character is instance, we are by default not grounded. So what we need is, we need a collision check to check whether or not we are on the, the ground. And the way we do that is to create an area 2D in our player. And if you have watched the kinematic body video, you may already have realized that this is way more advanced than using a simple kinematic body. Let's create our area 2D. This will be our ground check. Now in our area 2D ground check, 
we are going to create a collision box. So we're going to use a collision shape. 2D. There we go. So this will be our ground collision. Control S to save and let's select our shape. In this case, I'm going to use a circle shape. Yeah. Nice and circular. Let's just drag the size to reduce it a bit. Let's make it small because we don't want this to accidentally hit walls or anything else other than the ground. Let's move it down so it slightly pops out. Yeah, that's good. Let's set the X position to zero so it's perfectly centered. Perfect. And press Ctrl S to save again. Now, I'm going to click Area 2D and I'm going to create two signals that will signal our player script. So whenever a body enters our ground collision, which is this one, we are going to trigger a body enter signal. So let me double click that, select our player, and it'll create a function right here. I'm going to do the same for body exit, which is right there. And this is used to toggle grounded on and off. So if I'm on a ground, we're going to enable grounded. However, this will now, or rather this will now trigger regardless of what I'm hitting. So right now, even my own collision is now intersecting with my own body. And that means if I don't differentiate between the bodies that it intersects with, it's going to set that grounded to true. And we don't want that. Now, you could of course change the layers and masks, but I'm not gonna bother with that here. That may, that may be for a future video. So let's just do a simple grouping. Simple grouping here. <laughs> so let's select our world and let's assign a group to our world. Now, everything in this tile map is solid. So if I'm on any of these, it will be considered a ground tile. So let's select world again, groups, and let's type in solid. That's a good group for all of these, because they're all solid. Now, I, I could write ground or something, but not everything here is ground. So if I were to intersect with a wall, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a ground, it would be a, a wall. However, all of these tiles are solid. So I'm going to write solid. Let's go back to our player again. And inside our script here, we are going to get the groups that the body we collide with is in. So, get groups, var groups equal body, get groups. Now I'm gonna copy that on both the enter and exit node. I'm gonna remove paths because we don't need that anymore. Now, if we are on a solid ground, if groups has, because this is just an array, you can use has, solid, then we toggle ground. Or rather, in this case, set it to be on. And we're gonna copy this. Actually, I'm gonna copy both of these so we can get the comment as well. Paste it in here. So if we're exiting, the body, and the body is in a group solid, we are going to disable grounded, so we are no longer on the ground. Okay, so now we have a signal that triggers when we are on the ground or off the ground. So if grounded is true, then we can jump, and jump time is set to zero every time. But if we now are jumping, let's say I click space now, the directional force is going to send it up, which will automatically trigger ground to false when we are in the air. So we don't have to set ground to false in here. Instead, we are incrementing jump time, and when it reaches that top jump time, which is in seconds, this stops working. Even if the hand jump is true. So, if I were to release the jump button, while this still is true, so while jump time is still less than top jump time, and I release the button, which is this function, can jump is at the false, and this prevents us from being able to run from jumping more than one time, even if jump time is less. So can jump is false until we're grounded again. So now it should, in theory, all be working. Let's play our scene here, holding space. I'm holding space and I keep jumping after you are in the air. Let's, I'm, I'm hitting space multiple times, and it works. Now the thing about using this method, the entire reason for using the method right here is to allow us to control our jump height. So if I were to tap it, it would jump a little lower than if I were to hold it, as you can see right there. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them. I will do my best to reply to comments on the YouTube section as well as on Facebook. Okay, I think we're done now. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.